You just picked up your new Arden smoker. What do you do next? Hang out, I'll show you. So you've got your Arden out of the box and on your countertop, just take it out of the bag. You're gonna see some packing tape that's here to just prevent things from moving around in ways we don't want while it's shipping. Don't forget the tape up top, that's important. So there's gonna be some tape that's keeping the light cover in place. Now let me walk you through some of the accessories. Drip pan, one of the first things you'll find. Just working on through the pack here, you've got a, a wrapped up package of grates and ladder racks. You're gonna have two ladder racks in your kit. They're interchangeable, doesn't matter which side. And you've also got three racks for your food and a drip pan. Temperature probe and probe holder will be in your kit. And we call this a drip tray. This just protects your counter in front of the smoker. I'm gonna interrupt Rick with a special announcement. Arden is actually a connected appliance. This is something that we haven't shared before, but you're going to connect through the Smart HQ app and the Wi-Fi button on Arden, and that is going to give you access to so many awesome things. You're gonna be able to see your temperature of your probe, of your smoker, control all of that from wherever you are, and it'll allow you to get software updates and future recipe content too. Pro tip, connect your phone to Bluetooth, then hold for Wi-Fi, Download the Smart HQ app, finish up setup from there, and you are good to go. This feature is going to be amazing. I am so excited to be able to share that with you. And now back to Rick. Next step, wash everything. Um, just run it through your dishwasher or you can hand wash, whatever makes sense for you. And then we're going to install it. First up, ladder racks. Again, these are interchangeable, uh, so it doesn't matter which one goes to which side, but you want to put the two notches down and they will just sit right on top of these bolts and then you will pinch this top piece down and it'll snap into place and then repeat on the other side. Next up is your drip pan. Go ahead and slide that right in the bottom position. Next up, your three racks. Pick your position. You'll notice there are quite a few positions here. Uh, you've got a low, middle, and high. These are evenly spaced, but you've also got some other positions as well. If you wanted to maybe do three kind of up close, um, you know, it's really up to you, however you want to arrange it. Uh, and then there is also a top position if you wanted to hang items. So these are out and I wanted to hang food from this and smoke it, you can do that. You've got a probe with a holder and this just kind of comes right out and unwinds. Just a convenient way to store it in your in your drawer. Notice the probe port here. It's got a spring actuated cover. So you'll just pull that out. Plug the probe in. And you're good to go. And then finally you've got your drip tray. Just protects your counter. Just slide that right in there. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the control interface. Uh, I've got our power button in the lower right corner. And use that to turn the unit on, beautiful. By default, it boots up in the, in the preset menu, so we can select all of our different presets, brisket, pork butt, pork ribs, wings, chicken, salmon, customize. Uh, and then we can just do purely a keep warm cycle if we want, and it's gonna loop back around. Uh, to go into these, you just press the button knob, and now I can enter in and, and it'll already be pre-populated with settings for that preset. So what you're seeing here is brisket with a probe target of 195, smoker temperature of 225 degrees Fahrenheit, smoke level five. These are kind of a good starting point for any of these meats. If you would rather do a cook time, we can toggle that with this cook time button. Uh, and this will, in final production, this button will be a little different. It'll say probe time toggle. So I can toggle between probe target or a time target. So in this case, this is a 12 hour cook if I wanted to cook to a time. Um, I can also, by the way, plug in the probe for a time cook. So I can cook for say 12 hours, 20 hours, whatever you want to do for your recipe and monitor the temperature while I'm doing a time cook. To go back, I just hit this back button. It'll take me back up to my main menu here and I can select a different preset. 
So now I'm gonna select pork butt. Uh, similar, I can toggle between cook time and probe target. It's reminding me to put the probe in because currently it's not plugged in. I can modify any of these. So if I wanna go in here and change my probe target to say 203 uh, or 197, you, you can select that, hit enter. Uh, I can change my smoker temp to whatever makes sense, 250, and I might wanna do a smoke level four, let's say. Uh, so that's how you modify your, your settings. Same goes with the time. So now I, I push the toggle button. I've got a time setting. I can go over to my cook time and I can make this, uh, you know, whatever you want. And hit my back button again. So again, the same holds true for all of these presets. Now, one thing that, that I'll tell you, out of the, when you first power it up, it's got the presets in there, but once you modify them, it'll actually remember the, the modifications that you made. So next time I go into pork butt, it'll remember the settings that I used last time. So just something to keep in mind. There is a way I can restore all the default settings if, if I forget you know, what the presets are. I can modify that, no problem. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Well, I will go to settings, navigate by turning the knob to reset, and I can reset my presets only, or I can reset the entire system, but presets only is fine. So I press that, it's complete. There we go. So now next time I go into pork butt, it's got the presets that were there by default. Uh, clear smoke. So once we're smoking, and I've got a cavity full of smoke here, if I need to access it to say spritz the meat or make some modification, maybe rub some barbecue sauce, something on, on meat or rotate things, most of the time I don't wanna just open the door and let smoke into my home. So in that case, you would hit this clear smoke button and it'll start a 10 minute process of, it'll stop generating smoke uh, as quickly as it can and it'll continue to eliminate the smoke. So, and so over about 10, a 10 minute period, that cavity will clear out and then I can open the door with just very minor amount of, of smoke leaving the cavity, do what I need to do, close it back up. And then if I wanna resume smoke, I would hit resume and it'll start the smoking process again. Next, I'll go to light. You got your light toggle button, pretty straightforward. You can toggle that on and off. Cancel is if I'm in the middle of something, even a cook, and I want to cancel the cycle, I'll press the cancel. And that'll kind of, that'll get me back to the home screen. If, if I'm already in the home screen and I hit cancel, it'll actually turn the unit off. Next up, settings. So finally, let's go into the settings menu. I'm going to walk you through each of the settings in this menu so that you understand how to modify them. So auto warm is enabled by default. And that is, auto warm is when it's finished with a cook. So it's either met your probe target or it's finished the cook time it will automatically go into a keep warm cycle. You might call that a hot hold. Um, that is the settings for auto warm. So if I navigate into that, I can edit the auto warm temperature. So the default is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I can modify that down to 140 or as high as 170. So I'm gonna hit back to cancel out of that. I can edit the temp. I can also turn off. So right now you'll see this auto warm on and you'll see that when you start a cycle, if it says auto warm on, you know that at the end of the cycle, it will automatically keep warm. If I don't like that feature and I don't want it to automatically keep warm, I can turn that off here by just pressing off. So auto warm to summarize is the mode where at the end of the cook, whether it's hit your probe target or your time target, it will go to a lower temperature and keep the food warm until you're ready to eat. Next up, sound, very straightforward. I can modify that between high, medium, low and it'll play a little jingle each time or off. I'm gonna actually turn the sound completely off. Brightness, similar. I can adjust the brightness of the display from high, medium, and low. Pellets, this one you may, you may actually use pellets a good amount. So if, say I'm smoking with apple pellets and I wanna change that out to hickory pellets, this is how I would do that. I can actually empty the pellet tray, sorry, the pellet hopper and load new pellets in. So this is where I would do that. I'm gonna press pellets, and it'll, it'll give you a description of what it's doing to empty pellets. So if I press this, it'll start emptying. This process takes a while. So uh, we've just got a single speed auger, so it can take up to about 20 minutes. So this is something where if I wanna change the pellets out, I'd probably do it and then just walk away, do something else, and come back, and they'll be emptied. 
Uh, the next menu item under settings is auger, and you're gonna do this one as you get your unit set up, so I'm gonna show you how to do that now. What this will do is prime the auger. We're gonna take some pellets, fill the hopper, and I've got just a cup of standard wood pellets. Again, this is important. These are barbecue pellets. These are not for food. These are not for heating uh, or any other sort of pellets, so we use only hardwood pellets for barbecue. So I'm gonna add my pellets. Okay. And you can put a little more in there. It'll hold up just slightly over two cups. Um, what we're doing here with auger is we filled up the hopper, but the auger, which is basically a corkscrew, that tube is not full yet because you just received the unit. So we're gonna use this to what we call prime the auger. And this takes a minute 30. So you can just let that automatically prime. So it'll count down as it's priming, but you'll hear the pellets, because this is still empty, I don't have water in it yet, you'll hear, hear the pellets dropping in, and you'll know at that point that the, the auger is full. The sweet sound of pellets. So that was the auger. Let's go to the next settings menu. Units, what's units? This is where we can change it between degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. By default, it's gonna be in Fahrenheit, but you can select Celsius. A Couple more menu items here. Info, this is just to give you basic information on the firmware version that's on the appliance. Finally, we've got our reset menu. If I wanted to do a full factory reset, that'll cover things like all the presets, of course, but then also things like if I turned off auto warm or modified the auto warm temperature, um, it will reset those back to the factory defaults. Next up, I'm gonna talk about some shortcuts that we've built into this unit, uh, into the menu here. Uh, and these, after you've used it for a while, they're a few things that you find out that you do repeatedly and so we've kind of streamlined a couple of items if i wanted to quickly put this unit into keep warm at any point i can just press and hold this knob for three seconds and that's going to jump into my keep warm cycle and then i can start that so just a really quick way to get it into a warm mode like let's say maybe i barbecued outside today and i want to bring something in and keep it warm that's how i would do that really quickly next shortcut let's assume i'm going to cook a pork butt but I'm gonna put it in and I'm gonna leave the house. I don't wanna wait around for preheat. I don't wanna wait for some amount of time to, for it to start smoking. I want it to just go as fast as it can. I'm gonna go ahead and look, I've got everything. Let's say I've got this set up the way I want. I'm gonna start the cycle. You'll always have to click through the add water and check pellets just to make sure that you've thought of those things. Uh, while I'm in the preheating stage, I can press and hold the start button. And now it's gonna go straight into smoking. It's not gonna generate smoke right away, but it'll, it will just automatically go into that mode as soon as it possibly can. So in this scenario, I put the pork butt in, put my probe in, and I'm gonna head off to work. Something else you may see, let, if, if I'm in the middle of a smoke and I wanna end the cycle and I hit cancel, you'll see this little, this little animation on the smoke indicator. That means that it's clearing smoke in the background. So. Uh, you, you'll hear the unit continue to run, and it'll do that for 10 minutes. Uh, it is just to make sure that it gets the smoke out of the cavity, stops generating smoke before it shuts down and goes idle. There is a control lock feature as well. Let's say you've got, um, I don't know, a cat or kids that want to come push buttons. Um, if you want to lock it out to where you can't easily come and change the settings, I can press the back and start button at the same time. And it'll say locking three, two, one, locked. At this point, I can't interact with the unit with one or two exceptions. I can adjust the light. That's okay. We figure that's not a big deal. I can always cancel if something were running. To unlock, I press the same two buttons again for three seconds. During operation, if you pull this waste tray open, it'll alert you. Uh, just so be aware, if you see this red ring, that means that there's something that needs your attention uh, because it's not going to generate smoke with this bin open. Um, so it's going to, you know, the, the unit's kind of in an indeterminate state. Similarly, if you open the door while it's preheating, it'll tell you the door's open and um, it won't proceed with the cook. So these are all the highlights. Uh, the, for anything else, it's going to come with a use and care book uh, with, you know, all the different settings, uh, cleaning, all the things. I, we've covered some of that before in videos, but uh, it'll have details of all the settings, so you can refer to that with any further questions. 
Okay, you've got your unit set up, it's on your counter, everything's ready to go. We're gonna start a smoke. So the first two things you have to do are add pellets and prime the auger as part of that, which we've already covered, and then add water to the waste tray. So we're gonna do that now. I usually fill it up about midway. There's actually lines in this tray. There's a minimum and a maximum, and you wanna fill your water between those lines. I always fill it to about the midpoint. All right, so I've added my water. Um, Water is very important. We use the water to extinguish the pellets as we're generating smoke. So um, you always want to have this uh, full of water while you're smoking. Um, and I forgot to mention this water tray is removable from this carrier. So you don't have to take this whole thing with you to empty it or clean it. Right? This is dishwasher safe, uh, etc. So I've added my water. Next up, add your pellets. We've got our water, we've got our pellets, we've primed the auger through the settings menu. We're ready for our first cook. Now that Rick's got the smoker all set up and ready, I'm gonna show you how to do a quick pork butt. So before I was a field tester for Arden, I would have cooked pork shoulder or pork butt in a slow cooker and left it and served it to my family after that. But not anymore, I am getting to be a pro at smoking. I'm using Rick's 50-50 uh, salt and pepper and I'm just gonna it on here, give it a nice crust. I like to prepare the meat on the rack, on the cookie sheet. It just makes it putting it, putting it into the smoker so much easier. I'm gonna add a little bit of sweet coffee rub on here too, just to give it a little extra This prep is super easy. You're just putting enough coating on there to give it some nice flavor. Put it in the smoker and that's it. So let's go. Put the probe in before I put the meat. So when I put the meat in, I can just stick the probe in there. Close the door. This says that it's still preheating, but I don't have to worry about it. I can walk away and it's gonna auto start and just keep cooking. And then when it's done and has reached the target temperature, it's gonna go into keep warm mode. Now, if somebody gets here before me in the morning, they might wrap it in aluminum foil just to keep all of those juices in together. But I've done it without putting it uh, in foil wrap. I'm keep warm for several hours and it's turned out great. So when we come back, it's gonna be time for lunch. Okay, so it's the next day. I actually came into work a little late today, so it's lunchtime. And this thing has been smoking, cooking, or keeping warm for almost 19 hours. So we're gonna check it out. And the only thing we did was, um, somebody this morning came in and did wrap it. So ready to eat this, holy cow. Look at this, okay, so this is the bone, comes right out, perfect. All right, let's see how this, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my goodness. That looks so good. It is not dry at all after being in there for 19 hours. Look at that. Wow. The bark looks really good. It's just, I mean, it's just falling apart. There is no dry spot on here whatsoever. Let's see how it did. Mm. Mm hmm Well, I know that was a really long one, but hopefully it gave you everything that you need to know about Arden and to get started to make awesome barbecue like this at home. Uh, if you come back to the video in the future, just look at the timestamps on the bottom. You can skip ahead to anything that you may have missed. And in the meantime, I am gonna go have lunch.